Hi there, this is Eric for Ochoy. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with the Info Channels Render Kernel. So I'm in the Space Cantina Interior 01.MA scene. And if you take a look at the render settings here, I'm going to click on this arrow icon, which brings up the Render Kernel settings here in the Attribute Editor. And I've set the kernel type to Info Channel. And when you do this, it goes to Wireframe by default. If you don't have any render kernel in the scene, it will automatically go to wireframe until you add one. And then you can set that kernel to info channel, direct light, path trace, PMC, etc. So the settings for the info channel are found down here, and the main one we want to be concerned with is the type. These settings down here are related to the type that is set in this menu. So some settings will apply, and some settings won't, depending on which type you've chosen. So if I set this, for example, to geometric normals, we'll see a rendering of the scene that shows the geometric normals, and it is somewhat uh, faceted, as you can see in the back of these chairs here. If I set this to shading normals, you can see a lot of the faceting goes away, but other than that, it's a very similar type of render. So this is something that you can see uh, how the normals are facing in the scene, if there are issues. I'm going to turn off the grid here so it's not causing an artifact over there. Or this could also be used uh, in compositing to, say, as an input for uh, changing the lighting of the scene. Um, we also have position. So if I zoom out here, you can see that it's color coding the objects in the scene based on their relative position in 3D space. Again, useful for both diagnostic and compositing features. Uh, the Z depth, when I choose Z depth, everything goes white. But don't worry, all I need to do is go down here to the Z depth max uh, setting and increase this. So now you can see there's the Z depth of the scene. We also have material ID, so the objects are color coded based on the material applied to them. We have texture coordinates, so we have color coding based on the texture coordinates for each of the objects in the scene. And you can also adjust things like the UV set or the maximum UV. We have wireframe, of course. Uh, vertex normals, which is another type of normal shading based on the vertex normal direction. Object layer ID, so each object is given a different color. And ambient occlusion. So if we want to change the amount of ambient occlusion shading, we can go to the AO distance slider here and increase or decrease as needed. You can see it's a very fast render, which is nice. Uh, we have motion vector. Uh, there's no animation in the scene, so that is not going to apply, but that could be used to uh, render out motion vectors. Uh, render layer ID. Of course, there are no render layers in this scene. Uh, let's go real quick to wireframe, and I'm going to go to the render settings here. And here under render settings, I'm going to create new render layers. So I'm going to select this chair here, go into its attribute editor for a shape node, and under octane, let's set the layer ID to something like 10. And now let's go back to the info channels kernel, and I'll set this to render layer ID. And you can see that chair is now shaded in a different color. So any of the objects that have uh, 10 set to their render layer ID will match the same color. So it's a nice way to see very quickly uh, the render layer IDs that you have in a scene, especially a large scene. And we'll cover render layers in depth in a later video. We also have a render layer mask option. So you can see now it's masking out the, uh, the objects based on their render layer. So one option I wanted to point out was the AO Alpha's Shadows option right here. So I have my info channel type set to ambient occlusion, and I've raised the AO distance, so we can see the ambient occlusion pretty clearly here. Uh, but you can see the transparent surfaces, like the shield on this helmet here, are opaque. So I'm going to select this and take a look at its uh, material. It's using a specular material, which has a... Uh, high transmission value, meaning that if I'm rendering with path tracing or direct lighting or PMC, this object would appear transparent. But you can see in the um, ambient occlusion shading, it's opaque. 
So if I'm rendering with ambient occlusion shading, but I still want to see through that surface, what I want to do is first select the surface that is applied to it, so the material, not the object itself, but the material. Don't worry about transmission. Instead, come down here to the opacity slider, and I'll de decrease this. Now when I decrease it, it becomes black. It's not quite what I want. What I want to be able to do is see through it. You can see a little bit of shading in here. So let's go into the uh, kernel and I'm going to turn on AO Alpha Shadows and now you can see that uh, we can see inside the surface through that transparent object. And then of course we also have an opacity threshold. If we bring this down to zero, of course it's going to be completely opaque and I'll bring it up. So you can work with this and also go between this and then the um, the opacity slider and the material. So this is the helmet glass material, it's a specular material and as I raise that opacity slider you can see this becomes increasingly more opaque. So I just wanted to point out that that is how the AO Alpha Shadows works. If I turn this off completely then it's not going to have any effect at all. So the last thing I wanted to point out is that uh, many of the info channel types um, are also duplicated as render passes. So if you create um, render passes, so I'll just create a new one, uh, we can take a look here under uh, info passes. We have things like geometric normals, vertex normals, z-depth, image occlusion, and so on. So you could render these out as separate passes or you could use the info channel kernel. It's kind of up to you uh, which method you want to use, but uh, you can use both. Okay, so thanks again for watching.